Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with The Legend of Korra book 3 episode number uh, 5 and 6 reactions. Okay, the previous two episode, um, we meet the Earth Queen. Obviously she is extremely unlikable and <laughs> you know she, she's like selfish does things for her own like you know self doesn't care about the people like you know uh, like you know uh, taking more taxes from their people and is doing nothing and she like you know Cora talked with her and she was like all right I'll help you out find the airbenders but you do a job for me they go to do the job that is bring money their tax money from somewhere else and later on they kind of realized that yeah they were actually working for the wrong side because the queen is actually the bad person here taking money from the normal people uh ex like, you know like extra and heavy tax and uh, yeah doing nothing just using that for their for his or for her own comfort he, she's doing that and in the end of it she doesn't even help them find the uh you know like airbenders while at the like you know uh, uh, at the other place um zahir comes in and saves the final person uh not saves but you know uh breaks her out um i forgot the girl's name what was her name uh forgot it anyways uh you know like we had a little fight but you know like uh, uh zuko was defeated you could say and they used they took that opportunity to run away and uh Alongside that, another thing was happening, which is Kai is up to no good again, again with his own mischief and stuff, stealing stuff. And uh, by the end of it, he kind of uh, falls into a big trouble where he gets nabbed by the Dai Li and Marco and Bolin gets to meet his family again. So many things happen in that episode. And uh, the next episode is a very simple one, which where like, you know, we see Marco and their, uh, like, you know, his brother just having uh, spending time with his family while Kai has been uh, you know like kidnapped and there's like this type of an uh, like you know thing going on where the um, queen is like, taking airbenders without their permission and forcing them to you know act as their bodyguard or something like that and training them forcefully so um, Jinora and our group Korra's group and uh, later on Mark and Bolin as well joins in uh, they go and help Kai out and uh, yeah and in the end of it you know we kind of run away from the earth kingdom because the queen was all at our like you know tail and uh, yeah that was how it ended and then in the end we kind of split up uh tenzin goes with you know like his new uh found uh airbender uh, members while cora and they're going uh, you know and uh, oh beifong also comes in cora beifong and their group goes to republic city i'm guessing so yeah, let's see what happens in this episode. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. This is episode number uh, five of The Legend of Korra, book three. So I'll put in subtitles and the time I hear, sync it whichever is your preference, and let's get started. Okay, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought they were going to Republic City. Maybe not. Like, yeah, I guess. Like, Raiku is... will not be happy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look at Naga. That's a long way. <laughs> okay, what is this place? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, they're here. Metal Clan. Okay, she acted a little bit. 
What? Why does she like? Ah, uh, Naga. Okay, come on. Yeah. Oh, you monster. What? <laughs> okay. This looks really good. <laughs> I feel like something's going on. What's happening? Why is she not? Was she originally from here or something? Is this her hometown? Okay. N oh, wow. Yeah, she's not impressed. I feel like this is her hometown or something. Yeah. <laughs> Pabu's on top of Naga. Anyway. Mm. Okay. Damn, like Toff Toff is the reason all of this happened, you know? Like because of her metal bending. Ah, uh, dog. <laughs> oh my god, Milo. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh my god, she he he's probably like uh oh my god. To smile in the end. He's some kind of a bad person. This place is clean. Like, look at this. Like, so aesthetically pleasing. Ah. Tough, isn't it? There you go. Is Tough still alive? I don't know. Oh, I think... Oh, I think he's, she's still alive. Oh. Enlightenment. Okay. Oh boy, this place is amazing. Look at this place. Like, there's nature, and at the same time, there's like metal stuff as well. Like, it's kind of like, you know, not like a concrete jungle, but there's nature mixed in it as well. What the hell? This is a very huge place. Oh! Probably. Oh, okay. Wow, look at that. They're bending metal to do that. Ooh, that's... Oh my god, that's beautiful. Who does she remind me of? That, that looks like Yin. Is this Lin, uh, Lin Beifong's mom? No, 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 it's, that's tough, sorry. Maybe sister. Oh my god, Bo Bolin? Oh! I think this is uh, Lin Beifang's sister or something. Okay. There you go. Yeah, that's... I think sister, isn't it? 
There you go. They look so similar. Like, look at her. And this is her hometown. I, I knew it. Huh? Wait, what? Okay, that was a surprise. Same mom, different fuck. Oh damn, this is a... Uh... Daughter. Okay. <laughs> Look at that face. Way and wing. Oh, it's kind of like, um... Pro bending, isn't it? Uh, and football. <laughs> oh my god, look at this place. Wow. So many things you can do if you know metal. Look at this. You're making art out of metal. Go on. <laughs> Banana? <laughs> okay, what is it then? Oh. Okay. He's an artist. Or a sculpture. Come on. Is this the airbender? Oppo. That's a nice name. Okay. <laughs> She's like... Okay. Yeah. I will her mom Okay. Oh. There you go. <laughs> okay. Damn. <laughs> That's... Yeah. Yeah, why did she... I don't understand. I'm sure there's something. Oh my god. She's so good at it. Okay, I feel like she's just going to surprise her. Okay. There you go. As I said, she's good at it. All right. Ah. Uh. Oh, this is the... Ah, Milo! <laughs> oh my god, Milo. Being the teacher. <laughs> oh, this guy. Oh my god, I feel like this is, this is one of the bad guys. But we'll see. <laughs> oh my god
he's gunning for the avatar. Yep, I'm sure you do. Oh, this is how the wow, this is the security. Oh, <laughs> Lin's face. Lin's face. Okay. The tower. Oh my god, yo! <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Yeah, and you're... Uh, you're the Nuck-Duck! Mighty Nuck Duck. <laughs> oh boy, it is. Hmm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> He's too. Okay. Uh, what? What? What is this past? What is the story? I'm really curious. What the hell is he doing here? Yeah. Wow. Now Julie is there. Wow. Magnus. <laughs> ah, okay, he's not a... I guess he is a criminal, but still. Hmm. Exactly. Oh my god. Okay. Oh! Alright. Something must be really bothering her. Wait, what? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bolin. <laughs> My God. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Oh. Oh my God. Yo. No, not always. Yeah, like everything's okay in moderation. Oh.
Ya berbu. Oh. Hmm. She's practicing. Wow, she's really good. Okay, bowling. Oh my god, bowling. Yeah. There you go, act natural. <laughs> okay, calm down. Don't, yeah, don't jump the gun. Calm down, Bolin. This is awkward. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um <laughs> Okay. Okay, this dude, what's he doing? Oh no no, you're stealing what is he doing? Oh. Rula Hima, the, the one we... Yeah. Wait, this is Zahir? Yo, I didn't recognize him at all. He looks so different with his without his hair. I I I should have realized when he started talking about Guru, Guru Lahim. Uh, or what was his name? Guru, Guru Lahima, I think. Yeah. Damn, wow, I've never seen Kaya fight like this before. Oh, wait. God damn. Oh, God, yeah, this guy is legit. He was here for Korra. I didn't recognize him at all. Oh my god. I was like, who is this guy? Oh my. Oh, oh wow. I still don't understand why this do they have so much animosity? I still don't know. Okay. Yeah.
Okay, there's still something going on. I don't. I, I feel like so I think that was her name. She she didn't say everything. Or something else is going on. Like I don't understand. Like they were born. Like you know they were brought up in different manners. One was like a police officer. I understand. Like while she was a more of a rebel. So I can understand that, but that doesn't answer the question of why do, do they not get along so much? Like just just because they were they have different personalities does not mean they shouldn't get along. At, at least like you know like it, it can be a little bit of sibling li rivalry, but not like this. This is not sibling rivalry. This is some real bitterness. Like there must be some other reason. I I don't know. Like I feel like there's still something that we don't know about this whole situation. Like, why is, like, you know, like, I, as far as I could understand, Sue is more of a chill type of person, or at least in this department. Uh, like, you know, th obviously they don't like each other, but she's more, uh, I guess, accepting and still wants to accept her. While Lin is completely, like, you know, not at all interested. And it seems, it's kind of extreme. So this, the reason behind this extremity is what I'm, curious about which I'm I think they still have not told us and I'm guessing we'll get to know in the future we'll see okay but all right this episode here <coughs> we start uh, with um, yeah Cora and like you know them deciding to go to uh, what was the name of the city uh, where, where is it uh, Zhao Fu there you go a uh, home of the metal clan uh, Zalfu and there's like you know room, rumors not rumors but there's been like you know an airbender there it has come from you know the sources and Korra's like yeah we'll go there and take that person in while from the, here we can see like you know uh, Lin's uh, reluctancy to go to that place and I knew it was somehow it was probably her hometown because uh, not hometown, however, I, I, I was a little bit wrong. It's not her hometown. It's, yeah, it's, it's her sister's hometown. Yeah, that's, that's the proper word. It's not her hometown. She went, her sister went on different ways and her sister made this. It's her sister's hometown. And uh, I was kind of right, obviously. I, I, I knew, like, you know, like it, was, it might be something like that, something probably related to her family. Because obviously it's called the home of the metal clan. And this is Lynn we are talking about, and we still don't know anything about that family. So I, I thought maybe, like, you know, over there we're going to go and we're going to see, like, it's somehow related to his, her family. And it, it is true, that did happen, but in a different fashion. It's not her hometown, but her sister's hometown. So obviously we can see, like, she is not at all happy to go there. At first she was like, no, no need, and but Cora's like, nah, I'm, I'm doing this. That was my goal from the beginning bring all the airbenders in and I'm going to do that so they uh, jump on the airship and you know go on the way and I was kind of curious what's going to happen how they're going to split the teams uh, because the ship the airship was Asami so I thought what well, is Asami going to go with them but Asami is with us which kind of makes sense because she's part of uh, team avatar and while uh, Tenzin and all of them went on their own like an own, own way so we come to this city, Zhao Fu, and it's a really beautiful city. We can see, as you know, like I, I, I said, like you know, I really liked this city because it's not like a concrete jungle. There's, there's basically a lot of nature as well within it. As if you can see, you know, like, like there's metal structure, huge metal structures, but within the metal structures, we could see there's a lot of greenery within it. And obviously, it's like in, in a mountainous zone, which is filled with nature. So it's kind of like interesting the way they did this and I really liked the design of the city and uh, you know all right so we come to this place and you know hop her out and we meet this uh, this guy what's his name um, the truth seer I can't remember his name uh, yeah we meet this truth seer uh, I think that's that's what they call him truth seer or truth seek uh, never mind um <laughs> yeah and he welcomes us and at, at that moment we did not know that so when he asked like oh are you alone and Cora was like yeah and she he, he realized like that's that's a lie uh, but they didn't say anything obviously they went on there where they were like you know showing the place kind of moving uh towards the place 
where the airbender is and we shift our perspective to <coughs> the air temple where all the new uh, airbenders are there um we could see uh, dew and a few others as well and in comes this person and i should have realized it was zahir because he had the thing in his eyebrows and honestly speaking i really did not i did not recognize him i don't know why i, I should have recognized him i feel like almost at the end you know when he starts talking about the guru i was thinking wait a minute is this zahir but i was still not so sure about it but then they just tell us like you know kaya recognizes him so yeah like <laughs> i really was tricked and i really wasn't able to realize up until the end that this is zahir like if you remember while i was reacting i said something about like oh who's this guy this guy is maybe a bad person or something <laughs> there you go <laughs> yeah um all right we go back to zao fu and yeah this place is amazing we, we have like you know like Toph's uh statue as well and they're saying like you know it's like uh, it's like a place also to honor the first metal vendor and there you go like you know like i i've read a few of the comics of the avatar after the avatar the last airbender ended uh, i've read the one i think two or three of them i read about azula i read about the whole thing the whole mom where is mom you know like zuko's mom that prop thing i also read that i know everything about all those things w where is zuko's mom what is she doing what happened with azula all these things i know you know and uh but i think at the final comic i've still not read it uh, i've still not read it uh, i'll have to read it later on uh but so in those comics without spoiling much uh, okay this is not obviously not a spoiler but Toph, you know like he I, as far as i can remember she started a metal bending academy or something like that and she started training metal vendors so that's why i said like you know this is actually the fruit of Toph's hard work you know she actually started teaching others metal bending and like look and they they probably taught others as well and look at uh, like you know where it is now like we have such a huge city with a lot of metal vendors and um yeah like so that's why you know he said like this is here to honor the first metal bender that is Toph Beifong and they, like I, I was kind of also excited maybe we'll see Toph here I, I didn't even know if she's alive or not and we get our answer here she's still alive but no one knows where she is so hopefully we'll meet her as well because we did meet um um Iro, so and zuko as well so why not Toph? and uh, yeah so <coughs> we are taken to a huge place and we can see like everyone like practicing for the dancing i love that part you know where they used metal to kind of make a little lotus and you know like it was like and at first i thought what was that i thought it was kind of moving like a liquid i was like what is that thing and then i realized it was metal and i'm like damn look at the flu fluidity they're doing it you know like it's kind of like water the metal is moving like water <laughs> and uh, yeah <clears throat> all right we meet uh the matriarch of the metal clan suin and as soon as i saw her face i'm like all right this is definitely somehow related to um lynn and at first i thought okay is this her mom and then i'm like wait a minute her mom is tough what am i saying <laughs> but then i'm like okay then if it's not in the mom it's the sister uh most probably it's the sister because they are kind of look like the same age they have the same face obviously and um mm, yeah now she says like okay you you guys lied and uh, the girl, the guy says like I'm a truth seer, so I understood that you were lying. And Cora's like, all right, fine. Lin Beifong is with us, and she's like, oh, Lin is here. Cora's like, wait, who are you again? It's like <laughs> you don't know. She told nothing about me, and she's like, I'm 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 her sister, and uh, yeah. So now here's the shocking part. Cora comes in, Cora's like, oh, like, you know, you didn't say, uh, you know, this is your sister. And Lynn is like, half sister. I'm like, what? And that is really shocking. And, and she says, like, same mom, different dad. Okay, now, I don't know the, what happened here. Like, you know, like, uh, Toph, did she, like, you know, like, separate from, or what happened? I, I don't know. I'm sure we'll get to know in the future. 
Did their father die? Did she remarry? Or did she separate? What happened? Why? Like, you know, why is this the situation? And I'm sure we'll get to know. Uh, and I hope at least we get to know. But uh, they also do say they do nothing, almost nothing about their dad. And, um, uh, and Toph was busy with her stuff. So they also probably don't know much about it. But yeah, now we can see a very bitterness with Lin. She is definitely not happy. And but Sui, 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 Sui or you? Oh my God, I I'm mixing her name up again. What what's her name? Oh God. Um. Okay. Uh, Matrix Su Yin. Su Yin. Okay. Su Yin. <clears throat> okay. Su Yin. Um. Now, as I was saying, you know, I can see like you know bitterness within Lin, but Suin is take also has like a little bit of a uh, sass, but it's a lot more calmer, calmer, and a lot more different than uh, Lin's bitterness, which I kind of saw in the beginning, and I really wasn't able to understand why, and I still don't understand. I'm sure they'll let us know what happened. Was more details. Um, now. We can see that she has a lot of children. First, we meet two of the first, like, you know, uh, youngest, Wei and Wing. And then we, uh, we see they're kind of, like, you know, playing that, that a new game. It's kind of like a mixture of, you could say, pro bending and, <clears throat> I guess, football or something like that. I don't know. And then we meet this other person who's making art uh, or sculpture. His name is, what's his name? Huan. Now this is the third, third kid. <clears throat> Bolin was like, "Oh, that's a nice banana," <laughs> and he was like, "Oh, this is the representation, the dawning of a new age after the harmonic convergence." And Bolin's like, "Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. It's it's probably that, and my mistake." And yeah, this is this is basically artist, you know, like they kind of like you know think and see the world in a different way, you know, like. Uh, it's like their imagination or their their own thing and that's how she's making the sculpture and then we meet oh i think we also met another uh what was another child didn't we you know like the one who was with the where where is where did, where did we see that kid oh i think later on we see them the, the final uh, child of Su Yin. Okay, uh, yeah, and then we meet Opal. Now, <clears throat> obviously, we can see Opal is a little bit, you know, kind of uh, gushing <laughs> because of Bolin. Uh, but Bolin was really not kind of, you know, like, I wasn't able to understand that at the beginning. I think he was able to understand, but he probably, as he said, you know, like, I, it's not my type. But. <laughs> Hmm, yeah, and Korra was like, all right, um, let's go. And Lin was also kind of, uh, you know, kind of giving, like, you know, hurting them. Like, yeah, let's go, get out, let's get out of this place. While Suyin is like, oh, like, you know, definitely not. She's going to stay here. And Korra's like, all right, fine. Like, I will start here, but then we'll go. And, <clears throat> but obviously Lin is not happy about this whole situation. And we can see that they start their training. And Opal is pretty nice at airbending and uh, yeah she should probably learn this pretty well and quickly <clears throat> okay so interesting so this means that opal probably was a non-bender wasn't it yeah like you know like in in, in the family of metal benders she was probably a non-bender and that's why after the harmonic convergence she uh, like you know awakened to air bending that's what happened which is something you know like like we should realize from this all right uh next we go to the uh, air temple again and all the other like you know the new uh <laughs> air uh, monks are getting like you know are not able to properly you know do the trainings milo like very angry milo's like what are you doing you should be a leaf and this guy comes in zahid who we get to know at, the, at that point I, I i had no idea that this was zahid he just goes in and just does it 
and he's like oh like um it's the avatar going to come later on and when kaya says comes and says talks about tenzin and she's like no and he's like oh i wanted to meet her so much <laughs> and yeah and then we go back to su yin <clears throat> and there's food in front of us and it looks lovely and um, the chef comes in like gives them like you know all the descriptions and everything lin is not impressed at all while everyone's pretty you know interested in the food so okay here we meet this guy uh he's like sorry dear i'm going to have to take dinner in my office this guy is the husband i'm guessing and there's like other another person with the paper just going i think that's that's a, the the oldest the eldest kid okay i just had a major breakthrough on the tram station remodel okay as soon as like all right go ahead that was my brilliant architect of an husband batar and our oldest son there you go the, the, the other person with him so there you go five kids you know the first two we saw then the art uh, the sculptor opal and this kid five oh so they're like four brothers and one sister okay <clears throat> all right so after that um oh my god lynn again like you know kind of there's like oh five kids what a disaster and she's like oh no it's a blessing for me and you know like it's just you know like kind of nagging a little bit and uh bolin is just having food opal is like you know still kind of <laughs> gushing all right and then <laughs> bolin talks about his exciting life <laughs> to opal and uh, yeah and then the earth queen's topic comes in and uh, she's like oh she's horrible isn't, isn't she like does whatever she wants Lin is like, oh, sounds familiar. She's like, what? And then, like, you know, kind of Suin kind of gets mad. She's like, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, like either you say or like, you know, like, just. And then <laughs> Vary comes in from nowhere, and I'm like, oh my god, like <laughs> he's everywhere. <laughs> and as always, he he does his usual thing. He's like, uh, he's like, uh, everyone's like, what are you doing here? He's like. Oh, what am I doing here? Yeah, you're right. What are any of us doing here? Starts talking about the, like, you know, like, the <laughs> philosophical questions and stuff. I'm like, yeah, this guy. And she, he's talking about how he made a, a partnership with Suyin. And, you know, they're going to help them out with the technology and stuff. And uh, Lin was like, oh, he's a criminal. And, you know, like, Suyin is like, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, you know, he obviously he did bad like you know he, he was a criminal but he, he's he's di trying to change and looking you know, a little bit different now and uh, here we go sure vax made a few mistakes in his past but that doesn't mean he should pay for it for the rest of his life and he she's like yeah my chef was a pirate but now she's a culinary master people change and lynn is like you haven't and just leaves just bashes the chair and yeah here it's pretty apparent that something is wrong with them their relationship all right uh marco and bolin and the, like you know talk about uh opal uh, marco's like oh opal likes you and he's like ah, i understand that but she, she's not my type and marco's like oh yeah your your type is that ice princess or that uh, movie mover superstar or something <laughs> and he's like oh maybe you're right and like you know just puts the thing like all right let's go <laughs> okay <clears throat> now here's the important part uh we come and suin talks about what is wrong with them you know their relationships uh yin lin and her now quite a few important interesting things come up here he talks about how toff was always busy being the police chief and at the same time since she was restricted she gave the children all the freedom now, uh, uh, you know, Cora says, oh, that's great, isn't it? Now, this is an interesting part you can see. Cora also was kind of, you know, like, closed off to the outer world, you remember? You know, because obviously of Zaheer. 
and uh, you know like she was also not given the freedom i guess so i think that's why she said like oh this is so great that that sounds great doesn't it but it's kind of interesting because as i said like you know everything's okay but in moderation like it's definitely not okay to completely lock your kids up but at the same time it's also not okay to n give them so much freedom that you don't even look at them like that's plain responsibility now i don't know what was up with Toff. like as she said maybe she was because she was busy with a police job you know that's why probably she wasn't able to spend much time with them and you know and, and also like as she said like you know since her parents completely locked her off she tried to give her children freedom but probably misjudged the amount of freedom she's supposed to give so just like i said it's everything's okay but everything's okay in moderation and <clears throat> yeah they that was probably i guess um something that happened now like my god like i feel like <laughs> all these like you know, these people we've actually like you know like spend our time with them for example Toph, um and and now seeing them as parents i feel like like you know like they have so much flaws we can see that you know and like you know like ang's family also has a fair share of problems you know um like for example tenzin like has this weird thing about oh i want to like you know what do you call it like go up to my dad's expectations something like that that kind of thing um boomy has problems about like you know what do you call it she thinks he thinks that oh i'm incompetent you know my dad uh, was disappointed in me that kind of a thing he has you know like he he has that type of an inferiority complex while kaya talks something about freedom like he was she was not allowed the freedom something like that i don't, I don't remember something like that i as i realize and this kind of makes us realize like these characters like you know ang and everyone like when we we met them and we went through their journey like they were kind of like obviously they were the heroes they had their own flaws but by the end of the show we felt like oh these people are perfect now but now that we're seeing them as parents we see they have still have their problems and still had their problems and was the avatar that doesn't mean that he doesn't have any problems he has his problems and his family also probably went through a few of them just like how Toph also had a lot of problems probably after growing up as well after becoming an adult here we go her family as well it doesn't seem it was as sunshine and rainbows rainbows as i thought it would be and yeah their family also has problems and lin is just somehow very bitter about the whole situation um uh, suyin is as she said like you know lin became this type of a serious police officer while i became a rebel and you know my our mother did not look after us we didn't know anything about our dad and uh, yeah that's basically what happened so here we go like you know like problems 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 so many family problems and uh, yeah all right um here we go uh, mom wasn't too happy with how either of us turned out when i was 16 i left home to explore the world i sailed the seas on a pirate ship joined traveling circus for a while and talks about all of that her adventures and then says like i realized by the end of it all i wanted was a family it's kind of sad as i said then now that you think about it that she probably yearned for that one thing that she never got properly that is a family you know like her mom was busy with her stuff and you know like her sister was busy with her own stuff and she was a rebel so she realized it by the end of her journey that i just wanted a family that i never had properly and yeah like sad to think about it you know because uh like everything was like it's like an extreme like uh Toph's family like you know kind of restricted her so much that she was so tired of it she wanted to get out and you know she forcefully ran away and we knew know what happened that's why she thought probably she thought that oh i'll not let my children go through the same thing that's why she offered them freedom and she gave them so much freedom that her children her family now is also yearning for a family so in a sense you can say Toph, you know wasn't able to provide for her family what she like you know didn't get from her family as well i don't know what i'm saying but basically like you know she was also not able to properly you know like do something for them and now they she is suing is like yeah like i want a family like 
like imagine like you know like like what type of situation is this like um yeah when you have a family and you still don't understand the like you know warmth of a family that's sad you know that's really sad and nothing like no one is at fault here you know like i i don't know the tough situation at that moment as they said maybe he was she was so busy she wasn't able to do anything for them but i'm sure we'll get to know the situation and then i'll talk about it but for now like you know as i said like you know, i don't know anything about the situation so i cannot say anything about this but yeah anyways enough about that and she talks about uh, uh how she wanted lynn to be a part of the family as well but she i guess she never did that now here still i don't understand what is lynn's problem like suyin seems a lot calm and chill about this whole thing and as she said i want lynn to be part of our family and part of us but lynn seems completely opposed to the idea so much that it's insane and i feel like something's going on in the background which we still don't know all right, Opal is, uh, you know, kind of doing airbending and Bolin comes and tries too hard. And Opal is like, what the hell are you doing? Like, be yourself. And <laughs> like, again, another sad thing, if you think about it, you know, um, Ginger, you remember Ginger? I think that was her name. Uh, like, I feel like her, like, you know, like, like, her being with um, um, Bolin for, I think, a few days, I think. That kind of made him more Bolin like this. Like, he, he's, just, he's trying too much now to be the person that he's not. You remember Ginger when he, like, you know, interacted with her? Ginger was that type of girl who was like, oh, I'm, you know, like, I'm above everything. And, you know, like, we should not do this. We should not do that. You know, like, uh, she, kind of like that. She was that type of a person. And I feel like to impress her, Bolin made this type of a thing where he thought that, oh, I should act, you know, like, like this and try to impress others and not be myself. And that's what she, he tried to do here, which obviously Opal did not like. I think most of the people wouldn't like, like you obviously wouldn't like someone trying to do something and overdoing it. Like people should be themselves. And that's what Opal said. Opal was like, at first, you know, like you were a lot better and I liked you in that way. Oh, please don't try too much and just just be yourself <laughs> then Cora comes in Cora takes Opal and oh and then we go to the Zaheer situation and here is where I understood that this is Zaheer when she he talks about um Guru uh where, where what's, what's his name Guru Lahima yeah Guru Lahima and Iki comes here Kaya also comes and Kaya realizes like something is wrong then she they can understand she's like oh you're Zahid and then the fight start and I think this is the first time I saw Kaya fight like this and uh, yeah she's she's really good but Zahir obviously like is a lot you know more experienced you could say I guess and he just was able to get out of that place and uh, then we go back to Opal and Lin and Opal tries to talk nicely and like you know kind of be friendly towards her but Lin is like go out get out and yeah he goes away crying, Cora gets mad, Cora's like, yeah, like, you are like an older, lonely woman. You'll always be like that if you keep doing stuff like this. And we see Lynn crying, like, here again. I'm sure something's on, going on, which we still don't now know the full picture of. Because, yeah, like, why is Lynn acting like this? <clears throat> okay all right so let's get to the next one this is episode number six yeah six of legend of Korra, uh, book three so yeah i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right here's the countdown three two one go Hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
old wounds. Oh, maybe we're going to get more of Lin's story here. This title seems suggestive of that. Yeah. Oh yeah, I also never thought about it. <laughs> okay. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, 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 that'll be really good. Come on. <laughs> what is happening? Hello? Is this Varric's new invention or something? Oh my god, I feel like it is. I feel... What? <laughs> Yo, this guy. Oh my god, Julie. Oh my god, Farrick. This guy. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. I really hope that is so. He's paranoid. Yeah. Hmm. Exactly. Oh my god. Oh. Okay. Oh wow, Ooh, look at this place. Oh, she wanted to... He wanted to go for the president. Interesting. Okay. Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> well. Yeah. Oh, using metal bending to acupuncture. That sounds. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Neutral. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This seems... Okay. Oh. <laughs> the way she said that. Okay. Oh. Uh. 
Okay. Rebel and the cop. You can see that. Oh my god. Oh. There you go, it's working. Okay. Ooh, nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yep, he wants to learn. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 hmm. All right, that <laughs> there you go. Okay, let watch. I'm sure he'll. Oh, oh, that's how you do it. Interesting. Oh, there you go. Hmm. Come on, Bolly, try first, then I'm... Who knows, maybe you'll be... Oh! Oh, God! Damn. Oh, nice. Ah. Uh. Oh, it's those two. Oh my God, it's those two. Oh, she's also here. Okay. <laughs> his head okay come on oh my god oh my god okay he she's hallucinating now as Yeah, she had to complete the acupuncture. Oh, she's back. She, yeah, he said that. Oh my God. This is the reason. Probably going to do that. Oh my god! Oh, is that why? Is that why she has that mark? Oh. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh my god, look at that. Oh! Yeah, it's the, the same thing. Oh my god. Here we go. Here we go. Oh! Oh my god. And... Yep! Yeah... And okay. Oh my god. Wait, what was that? Was it? I thought he was an earthbender. He just made lava. <laughs> All right. Not like that. He's just trying to wish it. <laughs> Oh, I'll pause it here. <laughs> ah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> hmm. I think he probably tried that before as well. And that's why he was kind of reluctant. There you go. Hmm. Hmm. True. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well. Is it stuff? Yeah, it's stuff. Oh my god. That's why she left the city. Oh. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, I can understand why she's stressed so much. Okay. What? Like have a one versus one battle with her or something? That'll be interesting. Nice! <laughs> and yeah they're going to fight ah yeah better move back you know
Come on. Come on. Yeah, her insecurity. Yeah, her insecurity is insane. Oh! Okay! Yo! Damn. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go, mom. Okay, don't use them. Yo, this guy. <laughs> Oh, okay, then it's good then. <laughs> oh, wow. Yo, she's insane. She's insane. Yo. Opa. <laughs> oh my god, she's just... Yep. And hopefully that helped. I'm sure it helped her out. He got everything out of the system. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, that. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> the way she said that. Let's go. Oh, okay. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, they need to talk, you know. Okay, there you go. <clears throat> yeah, All right, I could see that from the flashbacks. Yeah. Yeah, she needs to tell that to her mom, you know. <sighs> hmm. Yeah. Exactly. This is a difficult thing, you know? Like, making your parents happy and at the same time keeping yourself happy as well. Like, which one do you choose if they are actually both different paths? And...
Hmm. Ya. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like keep it in moderation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nah, she's she, she's. She... <laughs> I think she's more of the police officer, you know. <laughs> All right. Oh my God, these three. A uh, four, sorry. Ah. Oh, what's he doing? How did he know? What? All right, that's the end. A really good episode. I like this episode very much. Um, and here you go. I was just saying, like, you know, what is wrong with them? You know, there must be something that we still don't know, which we might get to know in the future. And they just gave that to us in this episode. We didn't have to wait much. And uh, now, now I understand why, like, you know, Lin is so, so much, you know, like, bitter. And I, I wouldn't blame her. You know, I wouldn't blame her. That situation was kind of stressful, you know, the, the little flashbacks that we were seeing. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that, I feel like that was a very natural response. Like, I, I guess anyone would have done that would be bitter like this. If something like that happened throughout their lives, like stress from every, every aspect, it's just like, you know, haunting you from every, uh, where you look at and, uh, Okay, now uh, we begin with um, uh, them at the, uh, you know, like meal table, them having, I think, breakfast. Yeah. And Queen is not happy that um, <clears throat> Lin talked to Opal like that. And uh, here the conversation comes to a point where uh, Suyin is like, oh, you don't know battle bending, Korra? And uh, Cora's like, yeah, like Lin never taught me, and uh, you know, like, <laughs> and Sweeney's like, okay, great opportunity, like, join me, I'm going to teach you. And Bolin was also kind of like, you know, kind of like, you know, like interested in that, and probably Sweeney caught up on that, and she was like, why don't you learn as? No, I think Opal said that, didn't he? She, yeah, yeah, Opal said it, like, why don't you do it as well, Bolin? And no, who said that? Okay, um, yeah, Opal is the one who told that. Uh, Opal is like, yeah, you should also try it. And uh, Bone is like, oh no, I'm, yeah, I'm good with rocks and I, I'm, I'm the rock guy. <laughs> so I, I could kind of understand that she was, he was interested in it, but I wasn't able to properly understand why he was hesitating, which kind of gets cleared out as we get, you know, like we, we kind of delve deeper into the like, you know, episode. Uh, basically what he was he he like you know he he um was very as she said as he said Tofa Tof was her, his, his hero and he probably wanted to learn metal bending as well and tried it before but wasn't successful and that's why he was kind of hesitating here as well because he thought that oh like what good would it do I'm just going to fail either way and it wouldn't matter so instead of just trying and getting disappointed i i i'll not try at all and that was his like you know way of thinking as far as i could say but still even though he thought that the part of her him wanted to learn metal bending one by the end of it as we see you know like uh, and uh, that was like you know good i'll talk about that later for now um 
Oh, Varric comes in. <laughs> Varric with his new inven invention. And he made like a metal armor or whatever. And as always, he's like, Julie, clean this up. And Julie's like, my god, what, what am I doing you know, with my life? <laughs> oh. Okay, so Lin is just stressed out. And she kind of gets angry at the, the guards, like you know, the, the, they were kind of comparing who did the more push-ups. <laughs> and uh, the, the truth here, he, he tells her that you have to calm down, like so much stress is not only going to affect your life, but your job as well. And that was a good decision that in the way he told that, that was a good way to say that because <laughs> Lin is all, always about the job. So bring the job in that like, you know, conversation. Lin thought, like, you know, Lin probably got more interested. Lin was like, yeah, maybe he's right. Maybe I should go and check this acupuncturist out. And uh, yeah, that worked by the end of it. And we go to Zahir's perspective now. And Zahir and his crew, they want to leave Republic City. And here when we get to know that their, one of their plans was actually getting the president. Which I'm kind of surprised about. I guess... I guess it makes sense because you know this president is like the most important part of the place so but he said now like all right like no more doing that let's get out of this place first and they get a truck and convince you know <laughs> convince the truck driver to yeah help them out okay the acupuncture is happening Lin is still kind of like you know trying to deny Thinking about all the past, probably he was, she was like, "Oh, nothing's going to happen. I'm not going to get reminded of my past." Even though I, the acupuncture said, "Like, calm down. Like, you know, you let your stress go, and just, you know, like sometimes past visions might come up." So, and he was, she was like, "Ah, it's not going to do anything. You know, like I have no problem." But there you go. As soon as it starts, she starts seeing her past, her insecurities. I'm guessing little by little, and yeah, we can see the whole situation. Interesting way that we saw that is like, you know, like she, her mom did say about, uh, not her mom, sorry, Opal, Opal's mom, um, Opal's mom, that is Suyin, she did say about her being a rebel while uh, Lin being that uh, serious girl who was a police officer. So I, you know, I really did not think it was kind of like this. I thought her, she said she was a, a rebel. I thought it was something probably very minor i did not realize she was actually doing criminal activities and uh, i can i kind of understand now that we get the more details out of it why lin was so pissed off and so bitter towards her sister and why her sister was not that much bitter about the situation because she knows like in a, like majority of the fault lies with her she realizes that that's why she wanted uh, like you know Lin to like you know like welcome her back and probably wanted to talk with her as well which Lin never gave the time you know like for them to just sit and talk and that's why you know this bitterness is going around so in the first in the first flashback we see um Tu Yin just you know hanging out with her criminal friends which at, at least at that time we did not know those were like you know <laughs> criminals and uh, she's like oh like you know we're just hanging around while Toph is like you should be at school and not Toph sorry um uh, Lin and you know like we can see the disrespect that she actually kind of you know, like just d did in front in front of his, her friends she's like oh you don't even have a life like at least I have something just leaves and uh, here's the thing like you know like she says something which is which we kind of like you know should notice she says something about like oh mom doesn't even care which i was just talking about in the previous episode is like they like you know both Toph and Su Yin also had a little bit of grievance in their heart about their mom and the the, the sad part here is that her mom their mom wanted the best for them she wanted to give them the freedom that she never got but she misjudged the amount of freedom she should give them like she gave them so much freedom that it was actually her neglecting them it went to that territory and that in itself is not good at all that's why they were also bitter towards their mother you know um Tov, uh, lin always thinking about how to make her mom happy while um 
Su Yin just doesn't caring about the whole situation because she thought like mom doesn't care about us and that's why these type of rebellious activities you can see and uh, <clears throat> like I would like to say that no one is at fault here but I feel like I should say that Toph is a little bit, a bit at fault here because you know these two are actually like like Lin is not a child at this at least at this flashback but they were when they were children you know they were ch children they were young and the person who is supposed to teach you these type of morals or whatever you know is supposed to be your parents first and like it's unfortunate situation if you know like your parents are no more in this world or if, if it was something like that if you're an orphan that's unfortunate situation but Lynn was still alive here you know like even though she had a job and she decided to give her, them the freedom you know she wasn't able to properly talk with them and converse with them and come into understanding with her own children and that's why this happened you know and like him this rebellious activity so that's why i'm saying you know i would like to say very much like to say that no one is at fault here but i have to put a little bit of the blame on Toph here now this is just my opinion you know uh, as i said like you know Toph also had her circumstances she had probably had a police job this that all that stuff and wanted to give the best to the, their children wanted to give them freedom that she never got that's why she probably made that mistake but still you know like they're her children like, you know the first person that they would look up to for advice be it advice be it something else would be her and she wasn't able to provide them with that so anyways this is just my opinion you know so <clears throat> yeah like that was the first flashback we saw and uh, we go back to um uh the present where Korra and Suyin are Suin is training Korra and they talk about how the metal that they're using is a lot easier to metal bend. Now interesting thing here, we actually got to know how metal bending is done. It talks about how you use the earth particles within the metal to bend it. Which is kind of interesting, it makes so much sense, you know, like they're earth bending but it's metal. They're using the earth particles to metal bend. And that's like the actual thing that you do while metal bending I guess. Which is a good thing to learn here. We, we got more knowledge about metal bending. <laughs> okay. Now, they were doing that and uh, as, like, you know, Bolin was kind of interested. Bolin was kind of sneaking around. Bolin, when he gets caught, he's like, oh, I'm just here, you know, just, just trying to search for Pabu. Oh, Pabu, you're there. You're on, you're on my head. Ah, I thought someone was biting me. It was, it was probably you. <laughs> it stops, stops talking about venom and stuff. Like, oh, Pabu has venom. <laughs> starts rambling then he's like okay what are you doing and <laughs> you know like um Cora is able to metal bend very quite quickly after like you know she kind of teaches her a suyin and bolin is like oh you're able to do it so quickly uh, you must be one of those hundreds and i i could i, I could i kind of a little by little realize what was actually bolin bothering bolin she, he probably tried before to metal bend as well, but he wasn't able to. That's why he kind of gave up, but still, like, you know, his curiosity is overpowering that. And he wants to metal bend, and his curiosity is like, you have to metal bend, while at the same time, his past experiences is kind of making him think, like, oh, I'll be disappointed by the end of it, so why bother? So, that type of a thing, you know, like, so, yeah. We go back to the second flashback with uh, Lin and yeah Lin is uh, going after some criminals and at first I thought it was only those two guys you know like, I, I, like when they were caught I was like oh these two are the criminals but then when um, what's the name uh, Suyin came out of the car I'm like oh damn this is more serious and uh, yeah that's when she wakes up just throws off the acupuncture needles and just rushes out even though the acupuncturist was like don't do that you'll be troubled it'll bother you and you'll be very much in pain she doesn't listen she just goes away and she's hallucinating and stuff looking at Korra's thinking as if that's uh, Su Yin in her you know like when she was younger and she's like oh I need to go back she goes back and she starts the acupuncture again the flashback resumes where 
you know, like uh, we see uh, Lin was like, <clears throat> Lin was like, oh, like, what are you doing here? And Su Yin was like, oh, I owed my friends a favor. And she tries to walk away. Lin is like, you don't move a single step. And she's like, what are you going to do? Arrest me? And yeah, like, you know, that happens. He, he, she tries to grab her using the metal. And Su Yin just kind of slashes it away. It just goes and just gets her cheek. And that's what is the reason why she has those two scars in her um you know like cheek i thought that she got that by while fighting some criminals or something this was the tr truth the actual truth which i was kind of quite, kind of surprised about okay then we go to back to <laughs> zaheer and that you know like that part yeah the truck driver kind of messes up a little bit <laughs> the, the cops try to um search the Truck, but oh boy, Zahir and like you know, everyone just knocks him away, grabs the truck, and just rushes out. And everyone's just like, you know, like now, interesting thing here, they were all fighting, like, you know, like the girl uh, was using her third eye or whatever. And uh, you know, like, all that was happening. This guy, who I thought was an earthbender, you know, like that guy who made like that type of a thing, who Zahir came and uh, rescued the second, the second one who Zahir rescued, that guy the only other guy in it like you know obviously um he kind of made like a lava or something I mean, i'm like i'm like what like is that her power his power i thought he was an earthbender but it does make sense because i remember like that, that part when he saved him rescued him he kind of made that uh, earth uh, like you know thing like you know like in the flaming shuriken or something like that he made at that moment i thought that was maybe because he was earth bending and he was rotating it so much that it kind of like you know was kind of burning or something but maybe he has some different power and he kind of made like a lava pit or something like that what was that okay let me check that part all right uh they're moving um first the girl uses her explosion you know and then yeah this guy yeah it's, it's it's the 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 earth is heating up i think i feel like that's like his um bending technique he, he probably doesn't normally earth bend but probably changes the property or something of the earth like maybe here he changed the temperature of the earth and made it like a lava type of a mag magma type of a uh, property and maybe that's what that'll be interesting like you know a way to earth bend anyways <clears throat> All right, now we can see Bolin trying to uh, metal bend and like, you know, I'm being unsuccessful. Opal sees that. And Opal is like, why don't you go train with my mom? You know, and he is like, oh, like, you know, Toph was my hero and I've been disappointed. Uh, that's why I'm scared. And uh, then Bolin also brings up that, oh, you're telling me to not be scared. You're also scared. You're not, you're scared to actually tell your mother that you want to join us. <laughs> And uh, yeah, now the next uh, scene, we see the third flashback where Lin and Su Yin are in front of Toph. This part was very uncomfortable because, you know, like Toph actually saying like, all right, I'm going to, you know, like tearing off that thing, that uh, arrest report or whatever, and kind of pardoning uh, Su Yin at that moment, like, oh my god and i feel like lin probably felt extremely uncomfortable like imagine this situation you know lin respects her mom so much as a police officer and she, like you know for her she was i guess she, just like bolin she was her hero or something like that she probably thought like my mom is the best she never condones any kind of bad thing you know like any kind of injustice and then this happens she tears off the criminal, like, you know, that report or whatever, arrest report, and says, like, oh, you are going to be pardoned because you are my daughter, and just leave this place. Imagine seeing that happen in front of you. I also felt a little bit uncomfortable because of that scene, because I feel like the, the, the vision that um, uh, Lynn had of her mother that got shattered for a moment there, I also had the same vision of Toph up until now, where I could see, like, yeah, she's also human, you know, it's not that, you know, like, like, I, I, I would say it is like, you know, kind of like what she's doing is not fair, 
But at the same time, I should also think about the whole situation that she's actually her daughter. But as I said, like, you know, if, even though she's a daughter, that does not actually excuse her from being like, you know, like, like, you know, doing these kind of things. You know, she's not above the law and in front of law, everyone should be equal. So, like, you know, like actually excusing that just because she's a daughter and seeing that happen in front of her uh, and by that person who you thought that you like, yeah, she's the best police officer. Lynn was extremely, I guess, heartbroken, you could say, like because because her main goal, as she said, like my goal was to make my parents, my, my mother happy. And uh, I wanted to become the best police officer because I, like, you know, I thought my mom was also the best police officer. And, and seeing that happen in front of you, that must be devastating. And like, Toff was also struggling, extremely struggling to do that. And then they say, like, you know, like she, she probably like just retired from being a police officer, maybe because of that. We don't know, you know, like, um, but at least Lin thought that that's the reason why he left the police force. Um, but okay, yeah, like Toff says, like, all right, like, you know, you, you go and live with your grandparents and, um, you know, like, yeah, and like all the image and stuff. Now, another thing I think we should think about here, like at that moment, I feel like a lot of conflict was going on and, you know, probably there was a lot of people who wanted to just, uh, like, you know, like, uh, what can I say? Like wanted to just. Uh, overthrow it off or something i don't know like you know you know that that, that this was that like a part i feel like where uh, that guy uh tarlock's father what was his name i always forget his name anyways that it was probably during that time that all of this happened and there was a conflict going on like you know kind of like a spark going on in republic city at that moment and and the thing that Toff says here like you are supposed to be my my daughter and you being arrested is going to deal a huge damage to my image and i feel like that was another reason probably because like you know like if if he got she got arrested i feel like the people who did not want Toff to be the chief of the police force would try to use that as a way to make her resign and i think she was also thinking about all of those things she was probably thinking like yeah this is a mess you know not only will they try to use this against me you know but everything will completely go like you know in a wrong direction just because like you know she's my daughter and people are going to say like oh like being a police officer's daughter being the chief of the police daughter she did this look at her so like you know i'm going to put the blame on her and you know her um what do you call it like you know like yeah like yeah, people might try to bring her down like that i think that was also another reason why she decided to tear that off as i said you know there's probably some political reason and just wanted to, to let her just go, leave the city or something. And uh, all of these, like, you know, included, you know, like that scene happened. Uh, Su Yin left, I'm guessing, after that, but Lin was extremely disappointed, probably, at that whole scene and everything. Probably felt bad for her mother, at the same time, a little bit disappointed, and at the same time, a lot bitter for her sister, because her sister was the reason everything happened. And all these is what was bothering her up until now and i can say that yeah i don't blame her like anyone would be stressed out if, if so many things happened and like you know after succession one after the other but we could see you know like uh Suyin has changed you know like as she says later on that uh that was the best decision that i took leaving the place because now look at me i have changed and i know what i want and she has completely like you know reformed herself all right, and then uh, Lin and Lin was like, "All right, I need to like you know uh, just get like you know some like you know like get this out of my system." She goes out and uh, like and oh, and Bolin also like you know tells Suyin like, "Oh, I want to learn." And Suyin is like, "All right, like let's start." But then before that, the fight happens. Lin versus uh, Suyin, and that was an amazing you know <laughs> thing. Like you know they saw that fighting. Like both of them, I feel like Suin was winning at least at that part because you know, like Lin was under a lot of stress. She was tired before fi starting the fight. <laughs> yeah, that was. I guess that was a little bit unfair for her. Uh, but Suin completely. I feel like Suin dominated that whole thing. But still, like you know, Lin and all of the, like you know, and her was fighting, and Opal comes in and just stops them. 
and then she's like oh you guys are sisters like why are you doing this and then lin just faints and uh, after that you know like uh, marco goes in <laughs> wakes up the chief and she she just wakes up after having a nap i guess and she's like oh what a nice day just starts walking <laughs> that that was hilarious that mood shift my god <laughs> and there you go everything's out of her system and like we can see like you know and the chef just gave her some some kale coconut juice or something <laughs> and we can see her starting to accept everyone you know like uh, as they said this was this was a pirate and she's he's now one of the chefs and you know like i feel like lynn was able to realize like yeah people change people do change opal comes in and they have a conversation um lynn apologizes to her and she says that you know like why don't you like you know like join us or something like that i think he says and she's like oh i don't want to disappoint my mother opal says and a very interesting thing that um lynn says here is that this is the thing like you know like i forever for like, my whole life i wanted to make my mother happy but you know it, it, it didn't matter because by the end of it i could see that she was not so don't make the same mistakes that i did you try to make yourself happy and that's the important part here and as i said this is the, like a, a very interesting thing like um if you think of it in this way like there is this dilemma of should i make my parent happy or should i make myself happy my mom or my dad will be happy if i do this but my happiness lies in this what should i do now here's the thing i feel like majority of the time your parents will be happy at your happiness and you know they try to force something on you because they think that will make you happy but if that is something that doesn't make you happy you should go for the thing that makes you happy so that you know like at the end of it you will be happy and seeing you happy will make your parents happy and i feel like that's that's the thing that everyone should do and I, as i said like you know majority of the part because i do know there's a few of the parents like you know very small portion who are not like this who are a bit too much you know into like you know their own decisions and something like that that's a different completely different thing but majority of the time your parents will be happy i feel like if you yourself are happy so just like how lynn said always try to go for what makes you happy because by the end of it that itself doing that and becoming happy yourself will make your parents happy and proud and there you go opal goes and talks to her parent uh, parents about that and her mom was like yeah you know like i um like and i'm happy she said that because you know like she says okay here here is the part um it's okay i'm glad she was honest with me i want her to do what makes her happy there you go as i said like you know, all the parents will be happy with if you do what you what makes you happy mom gave us too much freedom but i feel like i've made the mistake of giving opal too little i think it's time i let her choose her own way I'm sorry I gave you such a hard time. There you go. Yeah, her mom also understands. And uh, she also again brings up the point of just uh, coming and like, you know, being with them again as a family. But she's like, no, I have my things to do. And uh, yeah, I'll promise you that I won't come and break up your house again. <laughs> That's all I can promise. All right, and then we go back to Zahir's tree, uh, uh, not trio, sorry, th those four people. And Zahir is like, probably like meditating or something. And he says like, oh, they're with the metal clan, Kora. I don't understand how he got that, but he probably did something. And that was very tense. Fantastic episode. I loved these two episodes, especially this one, where we actually get to delve deep into um, uh, Lin's situation. And I loved the way they resolved it. And I'm happy for all, like, you know, all of them. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. This was my reaction to The Legend of Korra, book three, episode number uh, five and six. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, or you haven't subscribed, and comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know, and I'll check them out.
so that's it uh thanks for watching guys and i'll see you guys to uh, next week with another uh two episodes of the legend of Korra. so yeah until then goodbye and have a nice day